Here we are. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Wise Guys Speak Podcast. I'm your host, Koo Ejinti, and I'm with my man. Mike Rayo right here, sitting in my broken office chair. I was in the middle of putting my chair together in the drive, yeah. and then the show had to start. So now I'm sitting with my legs, my incredibly short, stocky legs crossed because I'm too fat for my chair, and the chair just kind of collapsed. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so uh, not good. I'm essentially sitting on the floor. Looks pretty much looks the same, I guess. Uh, <laughs> in here, but so we got a big we got a great weekend. show. Yeah, we have a big weekend. Big weekend. A lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Lots of fun news. Uh, Joe <laughs> Biden fucking losing his fucking mind. I just can't believe he said that. I can't believe he. Did you watch the interview when he said that? Did you watch him say that? Yeah, look, he's he's from Syracuse. He has strong ties to Syracuse. He went to Syracuse University. Um, I've known Joe Biden. He is uh, he is not a smart man. Uh, there's no <laughs> uh, he's a gaff man, and I get it. He's a very likable guy. I mean, don't get me wrong, but uh, he uh, he shouldn't be in charge of anything. But I, yeah, I saw. But he's he said he's been saying stuff like this all the time. The pandering, and it, this is not a left or right thing. There are just certain people who don't know how to talk around people they don't know. He's like the white guy who only has one black friend. You know what I mean? <laughs> he doesn't know. So he's, he's come on, man. You notice and apparently all black people are from the South because every white politician I've ever seen that talks to a black audience just starts with the, come on, man, how you doing? Well, what the fuck is that? It is, I feel embarrassed for him. I don't know how bad it actually can. Hey, but I feel it. Don't, don't feel bad for him because he, he actually did that to himself because he said that at the tail. He said that at the tail end of the interview. First off, they lied to Charlemagne because they thought Charlemagne did a longer interview, but it was like a 14 minute long interview. And you could hear his handler. It's not his press secretary. It's his fucking handler saying, wrap it up because he's going to start saying some stuff. They's going to say stuff because he babbles so much and says the wrong yeah. stuff. We got to get Miko Belova in his ass. We got to shoot him up with some more ginkgo for the next yeah. interview. He's the same guy that was in South Carolina trying to promote himself, and he says, "I'm running for senator of South Carolina." I'm like, "What? What are you talking about?" <laughs> like he doesn't yeah, know he's where he's at. Low, and I, I, I can't imagine that they're going to keep him. But uh, he's been. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Is that again? I'm, I'm a white guy, so I don't want to black explain anything, but. Uh, when Hillary Clinton used to do this, uh, she would get into a heavier Southern drawl. And I'm like, that is the most offensive thing. And I'm white and I'm offended by it. I can't imagine. She, uh, y'all going to be. Oh, he did it, too. He goes, y'all going to be put back in chains. And I'm like, what the, yeah, she's, who the hell are you? you but the, the, the what's what's pissing me off is, is he he has said, I know, I know in my heart he has said the N-word because. For him to say you ain't black, because only a black person can say that to another black person. So he's been around somebody that told him how black people talk. Oh, so you ain't black if you vote for Trump, but if yeah, you vote for me, you black. And I'm like, that's the most condescending. First off, he's insinuating that he owns black people, and he's telling black people, look, you you do what I tell you to do, and if you don't, you ain't black. And I'm like, wow, this is 2020. People are talking like that still to people, and you try to get people to vote for you. And I'm, I'm having black people. Some black people are defending him, saying, "Hey, uh, Trump says worse and all that stuff." But that doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it right. The, the, where are we coming with a society that we could go? Oh, it's okay for this person to say it, but this person said, "Oh, it's okay because somebody said worse over it." I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Wrong is wrong, right is right. Fuck the bullshit. You can't yeah, say it, that. Exactly. And I'm, I'm not going to sit here and defend Trump, but I will say Trump is, it, he doesn't, when he panders, he, I think he did it with the Taco Tuesday thing from his office when he was running. And you could tell he's just so uncomfortable doing it. He just stops doing it. He says, no, I'm not going to do any of the pandering nonsense. I'm going to be who I am. And, 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 and I think most politicians on either side of the, of all political persuasions, let's say, would be better off just being themselves. I mean, because yeah, it's just, it's just, he comes off wrong. He just it's comes phony. off bad. It's like yeah, it's, it, it comes it's off like really fake. 
especially when he's hitting him up about about his laws that he created. And he's going, he's you you could tell he was like defensive the whole time, like he just wanted to get out of there really fast. <laughs> he couldn't get well, he couldn't get out the show fast enough. <laughs> what? No, don't forget. Now Joe Biden uh, said that poor people are just as good as white people. So I know I saw that he's oh he's a God. fucking he's a moron. Anyway, I laugh. I just laugh at it. I mean. Like, yeah, in his heart, I don't think he's racist. I just don't think he is. I just think that he he like I said, he's probably got one black friend, and he just just doesn't know how to. That's not good enough, Mike. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good enough in my case, man. You should know better than say stuff like that. He's been a politician for way too long to say that. But anyway, uh, so I'm psyched up to get on stage, but you were on stage. Yes, this so I did go on stage, and it was actually interesting. So I did the show Saturday. So let's paint a picture for the listeners. I've not done live stand up in front of an audience in almost two months. The right. last time I was on stage was March 13th. And when I got the gig like two days before, I was excited. I was like, oh, finally I get to go on stage. I get to perform in front of a live crowd. Then the day of the show, it's like, I was, it was, it, it felt weird. It's like, I was like, I've never felt like this. I felt like an open micer. I felt like somebody just started comedy all over again. Cause in my mind, I was just, I was nervous. I couldn't sleep. I had like the fucking loose bowel thing going in my stomach. Um, all right, TMI. I'm uh, just uh, saying, I was like, it was literally, I'm talking to people over the phone on the way to the, to the show and saying, look, I don't know what to talk about. Usually I, I kind of have an idea what I'm going to talk about, but I just didn't know what to say. Uh, how the crowd would be? Would they have face masks on? Would they have no face masks on? Um, they're not encouraged. They're not saying to take it off, but if you want to, you can take it off. <clears throat> so right. it's just a whole bunch of stuff that's going to my head. I was like, what? What can I say that would be funny? Because I knew I had to do coronavirus jokes. I got, I got to do some kind of coronavirus jokes. Right. I got to do some kind of joke. There's gonna be like, oh, it's a coronavirus joke. Uh, Rich was hosted, so it's rich. Steve Brandow, Drew Holloway, me, Slade Ham, Andy Huggins, and Reed. Wow. Uh, yeah, a lot of heavy hitters. So, Rich is hosting. He gets on stage. First up, when they got there, the audience, in my opinion, I have this psyche that I go by. Uh, if the crowd is not talking amongst each other, right? I don't think they're a good comedy crowd. That's my theory. Because every time I've done, I've done a million shows. Every time I see a crowd that's talking amongst each other, they engage in, they want to have a good time, they enjoy each other's company. This crowd did not speak the whole time uh -oh. before the show. They were just like quiet. It's like people were anticipating something. I felt like people wanted just to get out the house. Oh, there's a comedy. There's something going on here. Seven o'clock. Let's go here. I don't think they were a comedy crowd. I just think they just wanted to get out the house. And God bless them for going out. I'm glad they went out. So anyway, uh, Rich does his coronavirus joke. The first joke he does is coronavirus joke. Didn't get nothing. Didn't get nothing. He did like about five minutes of coronavirus jokes. It did not. It did not hit. He got a couple of chuckles, but it wasn't like a big laugh. So yeah. By the way, Rich doesn't look nothing like that no more. He looks fucking way older. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so he didn't do none of that jokes. None of the coronavirus joke works. Okay, so the next comic, uh, Stephen Bradow, he did not do any. Corona. He just did his bits. He did his normal set. Did well. Uh, Drew Holloway doesn't do current event jokes, so he just did his stuff. That went well. So I went on stage and said, oh, I'm going to do my coronavirus jokes. I get on stage in the first five minutes, Mike, I'm just mad. I'm just babbling and just just running. Just I'm just, I was just talking. I don't know what the hell I was saying. I was just just, just spin out whatever came to my head at the time. Then uh, five minutes later, I go, okay, I got to do my material because everybody got 10 minutes. I was like, all right, cool. So the next five minutes, I just did all my old stuff, and that worked. And by that time, it's like basically spinning the wheel. It's like, okay, I'm spinning the wheel here. I'm spinning the wheel. But I was like, okay. But then when I started getting my groove back, Rich was like, it's time for you to get off stage. And I was like, oh, okay, perfect. Uh so I get off stage. And I, I felt so bad because I was like, man, this, I don't I, I felt like I didn't do well. I got a couple people say hey, you were funny, but I was like, I don't think I did well. I don't think I did. Then I went to T Group yesterday just for the open mic to see how the open mic is. And uh, they had a show early that night. 
uh, the Drew was like, hey, you want to close the show out? Do like 15 minutes. I said, sure, why not? <clears throat> I get on stage. And oh, by the way, the first show, the lights were bright. I forgot how bright the lights is at the secret group. So it's like, oh, really yeah, they're in your face. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're in the main stage. So the lights like literally in your face. So it, that was another thing that threw me off. I, I forgot how bright the comedy lights can be, stage lights can be. Anyway, so I get back on stage Sunday and I did crowd work. <laughs> boom. I hit crowd head with a crowd work. Boom, 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 boom. I did crowd work for like maybe like three minutes. Then I started rolling. And I asked a question. I said, hey, who wants, who wants to hear coronavirus? Because I know you guys are probably uh, tired of hearing it. And the crowd was like, oh, we want to hear it. So I did my coronavirus joke. They laughed. And I go, OK, boom. I, I realized. Well, suddenly that, they're working. That's great. Right. So I realized what I did wrong. I went on stage, Mike, the first Saturday. I just did. What if you know me just do material? I went up there and just did material like an idiot. But I should have done crowd work. But I forgot. What I was doing because I was so nervous of what to say as my first thing to come out of my fucking mouth because I've been so deprived of stand up that I just did something that wasn't me. But yesterday, I was so much me. I was so much in control and it was a good set. So I was like, all right, I'm back. And that's why I said to myself, I'm back. <laughs> that, I mean, I'm glad. I mean, it's, you know, everybody's worried. I'm, I'm apprehensive. I don't hit the stage until I go on with you on June 6th. I'll probably go out and do an open mic or two if there are any. And I got some um, video comedy that I've been doing, and I got one up in uh, College Station. Um, so I, I, you know, I'll probably do those to kind of warm me up before I get on a paid show. But uh, I'm, I can't wait to get on stage. But I, I'm wondering, yeah, shit, am I? How rusty am I? How good or bad is my time? Yeah, it's, it's, Andy, do because Andy was when we interviewed him like a month or a half. Andy, month Andy after. did great. He did great. Everybody, I think everybody did great after me. I, I think I, I, everybody did good. Everybody did. I just, I personally, I was so nervous. I was just fucking just blabbering for like five minutes. I didn't know what to say because again, it was just I haven't been on stage for so long. So it was, it was like excitement and the nervousness of like, am I still good because. It's, everybody say, oh, you perform here, you do this, you make people laugh here. But it's not the same because you're hearing laughter as soon as you say the punchline or say a specific word. Everybody goes, ah, ha, ha, ha. And you go, okay, this is what I miss right here. I miss the instant reaction to something I just said. Then doing yeah. online stuff and you're not hearing the laughter. You're just seeing emojis. So you don't know if you're really killing it or not. So, yeah, it's a different feeling. That's, well, I'm, I'm glad. Uh... Everything else uh, looks good. I mean, you look good. Uh, you posted a picture of how Love much it. you lost. I, I found it. Whatever way you lost, I found it. <laughs> that was another thing oh that was kind of weird because people thought, oh, you look great. You look great. You, are you still losing weight? I'm like, I don't think so. Then I looked at my picture from exactly last year, and I go, wow, I see the difference with the face. I was like, okay, well, I guess I lost a little weight more. So. Yeah, and that that's the, that's the tough thing for me is, is I was doing so great on this diet, and I lost like 60, 70, 80 pounds. And man, I haven't gained it all back, but boy, I've gained almost all of it back. It's uh, um, that it's Stephen says they can't wait. We got our first open mic tomorrow in Laredo. Hey, Stephen. Yeah, where is it at, Mister Sosa? Where is the open mic at? Okay, we'll get back with us. <laughs> yeah, he will. He, well, there's a pretty pretty long delay. Yeah. Uh, and we're we're about. I'm looking at the monitor here. We're behind about a minute. But uh, while we're waiting. So, uh, go ahead. No, I was saying that, uh, did you watch The Last Dance? We forgot to talk about that last week. We didn't cover that. No, you know, I didn't. But here's what I did. Uh, my wife um, watches Ryan and Kelly, or Kelly and Ryan, some m morning show. And that's where she gets all her news and information okay. from. So cold Steve, Brew. At the Cold Brew, same, same place. Steven, don't forget our numbers. Give us a call. Uh, we'll, we'll come down there the next time I roll through... Uh, the Valley, I would certainly like to stop in uh, Laredo. Laredo, West Texas, baby. So um, my wife now has insisted that we watch Tiger King, and I told her, "No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not watching it." So she watches the first episode, and she goes, "I didn't know it was a documentary." I said, "You have been watching them talk about this show, and you didn't realize." For months. How did she not know? Not she throws a she throws a TV show. That's yeah. So she makes it through like an episode and a half. So finally, there's TMZ, 
has, and you can stream it. TMZ has a thing about the Tiger King. It's but it's all over in an hour, right? Without commercials, like forty five minutes. So that's what I did. I played that. We watched that together, and I'm like, okay, are you happy? It's a bunch of fucking rednecks with uh, uh, mullets. So it's redneck mullet people uh, who own exotic animals and they're trying to either screw or kill each other. I said, which, you know, is pretty much the story of white trash America anyway, where we don't need a documentary about this. I mean, dumb and dumber could be a documentary. If this is a documentary, it's just the stupidest thing. And um, you know what? Speaking of mullets, um, our guest today is uh, Is the trap wizard. Now this guy, before I bring him up here, this guy, I met him when I first moved down here. He he was at a, a comedy club. I was doing a show, and he was at a comedy club. And he books um like he he books uh, disc jockeys. He DJs himself as an interactive DJ. He does characters. He does voices. And uh, he was looking for comedians, and he he booked me at a couple of gigs, more than a couple. Um, How long ago is this? This is like what? Oh, it's got to be twelve years? years ago. Yeah, no, no, yeah, at least 10, 12 years ago. And uh, uh, then uh, he's been a he's this guy has done everything. He's one of the most interesting people I've ever met. He was a large uh, act magician. That means the ones with the big tractor trailers that have all the big events. Um, and I've been to his house, and most of the stuff is still in his house, including some secret rooms, um, which I'm probably not supposed to talk about. But yeah, uh, he now he now is a, a personality. He's been on all kinds of reality TV shows and travel shows. He travels the world. Um, he is the traveling wizard, um, and he's on with us right now, Bill Wytrek. Hey, Bill. What's hey, up, Bill? Going? What's going on, brother? I was going to do a quick, you like impressions, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, uh, actually, I have a coronavirus joke for you. Want to hear it? Oh, oh yeah. okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, we have to wait. Uh, two we-, we have to wait two weeks to see if you get it. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. This is why he hires comedians. Uh, shows uh, a wit. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so going? What's your story? Because when I walked into your house, it was like walking into the magic castle in California. <laughs> what? Uh, what's your background? Where? Where? Where did you start in show business? Well, I'd like to tell you a little about my background. Oh, it's kind of a, <laughs> literally his background. The king of the corny jokes. I forgot about that. We have Bill and I haven't talked in a couple of years. I, I got puns. That's that's I don't, yes. I, I don't know anything about puns. So you so you, you do a lot of dad puns, huh? Well, they, they call them dad jokes because now that they don't have jokes anymore, they have memes. So <laughs> It's true. Millennials don't have jokes. They have memes. Yeah, they're, they're the worst. They're the worst. Anyway, well, this, uh, I digress. Uh, so about my background, I uh, started off uh, in the entertainment business as a clown. Got into it accidentally. A friend of mine was... Uh, you have pictures uh, of this clown stuff? Can we Google that? Can we find that? <laughs> you, you don't You don't want to see my first clown pictures. They're really horrible. Uh, really <laughs> horrible. Uh, it was a woman who uh, I knew uh, indirectly, and she... Uh, I got pregnant sort of uh, unexpectedly and needed someone to do her shows. Her name was Balloony the Clown, and she was about five foot five. And she gave me her outfit to wear and a, a can of those peanut snake things, you know. Uh, uh-huh. the, yeah, and a couple of balloons and uh, a, a Bible coloring book, magic coloring book. And that was it. That was my show. And so uh, anyway, I started off doing that. Then wow. I was I was terrible for a very long time. And then I, I started taking it seriously. And. And, and got some magic tricks and you know uh, anyway i do all kinds of stuff now my uh, my passion is traveling the traveling wizard.com follow me on instagram can i do shameless promotion yeah absolutely yeah, that's why you're here that's why you're here <laughs> sir that's me going wizard. to the bathroom we don't want to show that picture <laughs> is that really you no i'm kidding uh, no this is what? ethiopia it's, it's the weirdest place i've ever been it's in the afar region of ethiopia and it's where three tectonic plates meet together, and it's the weirdest scenery and bubbling green stuff. And man, it's a crazy place. You want a crazy place? That's a crazy place. Wow. Anyway, so how so. many countries have you? Oh, wait. Actually, I think um, we. Uh, I think we found your um, 
So that's that, that's you uh, with your. Yeah, you, I I just do carry on now. The <laughs> airlines on Spirit Airlines that's like five hundred million dollars. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't do that anymore. Um, I took um, my case to court. I, I did find your clown picture, by the way. There it is. Uh, <laughs> that, that's uh, it. The one in the middle. That's oh, it. Yeah. So what's so why you go by a wizard? If you do, do you do, do you do magic tricks or no? Yeah, I've been a, a magician for years. For, I did uh, done kid shows and I do a lot of different things. I do uh, game shows, kid shows, impersonations, things like that. But anyway, uh, it all started uh, when I started doing my videos and I just kind of did them for myself at first before I got a YouTube channel. And I used to go, I, I've been to a lot of third world countries and I would do magic with, uh, you know, rocks and sticks and, you know, make things disappear. And uh, so kind of a wizard basically uh, performing. And then uh, I, I guess my, uh, the name, the traveling wizard uh, was available <laughs> on uh, uh, nobody had taken the domain. So I got that. And then the second thing was, uh, I, I feel like as a wizard, I still do magic tricks when I'm performing to kind of lighten up a mood. I was just recently in Papua New Guinea where they don't have electricity or basically anything. They, everybody makes their own everything. I mean, there's these people have never tasted a Coke or an ice cream. But I was in a village, wow. you know, doing some magic tricks, and these people just went crazy for it. So oh, wow. in a way, that's that, I'm a traveling wizard that way, but I'm also um, a wizard in the fact that I uh, like to help people make uh, travel possible for them who thinks it's impossible. Anybody, I believe anybody can travel regardless of their income or how busy they are with their job or their situation. There's always a way to travel. And so uh, I try to dispense well, that information and help people get over the myths and the obstacles. Yeah, because I believe in that because what uh, Mark Twain has a famous quote. He says, the, what the antidote for ignorance is traveling or something like that. I believe it. Yeah, so that makes Best sense. Best education I ever had. Wow. That's awesome. So what is the difference between a wizard and a magician? What is the difference? Are they isn't it even a difference or just a fancier name? Be called a wizard. Well, you know, I uh, when I first got a logo for the traveling wizard, uh, there was like six different artists that were doing it and they all did old guys with a cone hat. So I think the perception is <laughs> that's a wizard. So I don't know that I'm good. I, I just shaved off my beard. I actually... I was a clown the other day for the first time in nine years. Oh, wow. And I, I put my makeup on, I did a little Facebook live video and I went out and I, I haven't, uh, I didn't even know that you could find my clown socks, but I found everything. It was still there. I dusted it off. I did a little video and I went out and just, somebody wanted a, a clown that was uh, annoying. And uh, I thought, well, that's pretty easy. I don't have to carry anything <laughs> except for a couple of tricks in my pocket. And anyway, you it, might pull it, it was up, really Mike? fun. What's yeah, that? I'm going for it. Okay. Yeah, because I want to see this clown. It's, it's, oh, the, the video? Yeah, yeah. Aren't you Facebook yeah, friends with him? Keep, talking. Keep, keep, keep going. Oh, wow. So, so you traveled. So, to, uh, so you went all over the world, like every single con continent you've been to? That, that's my goal. So uh, okay. there's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different ways of counting countries. The UN counts 198 countries, and those are countries that uh, are part of the United Nations. But there's lots of countries that aren't part of the United Nations. So you can count that. You could go to every UN country and say you've been to every country in the world. Or you can say, OK, I've been to all these countries plus these other ones. So if you count that way, I've been to 197 countries. Jesus. Wow. And these are weird countries. Uh, some of them are weird countries like Transnistria, which is recognized by no one except itself. Transnistria. Where's, where is it at? Where is it located? It's at uh, the bottom of Moldova, which doesn't help you at all because nobody I don't knows know what that Moldova. is either. Jesus. I had a little, I had a little uh, event here. Uh, some of my friends came over, and there was a lot of Russian girls uh, here from uh, different parts of, uh, you know, Eastern Europe and stuff. And uh, a lot of times they'll say they're they're from Russia, and you're like, well, which part of Russia? Well, I'm from the country of, because they don't expect anybody to know where Azerbaijan is or Kazakhstan or yeah, you know, I know Kazakhstan these... because of the fucking Borat made that because it's a nice. It's a nice lady, my wife. <laughs> That's all There's I know actually, about Kazakhstan. There was actually three people here the other day from Kazakhstan. And I was like, wow. You know, it, in the movie, it's one thing. But when you're actually there, I went I went skiing there. It's just, it was beautiful. And there's mountains. And the city was clean. And uh -huh. it was fun. I had a great time. That's funny. You drink, uh, how... get drunk on fermented uh, horse milk. What? Yeah, it, it's it's oh. not very pleasant. Trust it's me. It's not very pleasant. <laughs> I love how you just flew... For your country in America to go to a fucking other country to drink horse milk. They have horse milk here, brother. You'd have to go over there to drink that shit. 
You can do this shit right here in the neighborhood, right here. <laughs> so that's uh, my What's YouTube the video? channel. What's the video? Well, I, I don't, I've, got a, I've got about 200 of them. No, I'm talking I, about the I'm way uh, behind. The live, I did a the couple. one with the clown one. I want to see the one with the clown. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not on that. my YouTube channel. Yeah. It's, it's on his it's, Facebook uh, just, hidden, just for Facebook friends. But if you uh, if you want to find me as a clown. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So you and Mike are not even Facebook friends? Of course we are. Yeah. So look it up then, Mike. <laughs> it's a very I long video. Serve you, sir. <laughs> if you just Google Yummy the Clown, Yummy the you'll clown. see a picture. <laughs> Yummy the Clown. Why you All right. All right. Well, we'll, we'll wait. Don't mind we'll, us. We'll wait till you we'll finish wait. Googling it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what, uh, what's your favorite country that you've been to? You can't say uh, that. You know, it's funny. I, uh, people oh, ask me that all the time. And I got to say, America. Ah, red, Mike and America, blue. great. Oh, boy. More specifically, Pearland, where the police <laughs> visit you regularly. <laughs> no, I really uh, like uh, Turkey. I think my friend uh, Mooder is uh, watching this right now. I saw him on the watch, uh, doing a watch party. And Mooder is a uh, carpet salesman in the Grand Bazaar of Istanbul, uh, which oh, is no, a good. It, it's a great place. Uh, you can go there and it's you can. It's a great place. <laughs> it's a great place. The Shekhar Edra Mahab. Good women. It's very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I love so Turkey. Turkey. I love Croatia. I'm Croatia. A, okay. I'm a fanatic about Easter Island. I have Easter Island statues in my backyard. It's not a country. It's part of Chile, but for some say, reason, I've just got. Okay. Go ahead. Easter Island was discovered on Easter Sunday, hence the name. Has nothing to do with eggs, and um, <laughs> it's it's a weird little uh, place. It's the most remote uh, island in the planet, and they have these big giant stone heads. You've seen pictures of them. They're called yeah. Moai. Night and, of the uh, Smithsonian. Dum dum got some gum gum. Right. That's it. Yeah, that one. Uh, yeah, that put the Moais on the map. Yeah. Oh wow! I, I didn't actually know that. made a movie uh, called Rapa Nui. Kevin Costner uh, directed it or something. Anyway, uh, but it's a fascinating place. It's these big giant stone heads. That nobody knows where they came from. I mean, they know where they came from, but they don't know how they got them around or anything else. It's a crazy place. So but I, I love you. stuff like that. I so love I'm archaeology. Mad at you. I'm mad at you already, Bill, because I thought you were going to say your favorite place is Nigeria. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for you to say Nigeria, but you did. All right. So uh, we talked a little bit before, and uh, uh, Ku is from Nigeria, which I, I was am just born and raised. If you don't know where Nigeria is, it's uh, this part of Africa. <laughs> exactly that part of Africa. Am I right? Yes. yes. It's like the armpit of Africa. Yes, it is. It it costs about $600 to get a visa to get there, and you have to put up with all kinds of crap at an embassy, and it's just hellacious. And then if you get there and survive. <laughs> <laughs> survive. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the people there are wonderful. Uh, as, long as, you're not, as long as you don't hang out with the Yahoo boys, you're good. Uh, it's uh, got a great art scene. They said the people there uh, are nice. <laughs> no, no, the, the Nigerians are very friendly, but you got to get past people. very friendly people. You got to get past the uh, all the people who are trying to scam you, and there's a there's a bunch of those. So I tell yeah. people all the, I tell people all the time: if you want to go to Nigeria, hope you don't have a sensitive nose because you will probably hate it because <laughs> you it's it's. It's pretty smells really bad there. It's, you, it's really? not for you have to have a really I good. I don't remember. I don't remember a bad smell. Shit. Now I've been to India, and hopefully I don't have any Indian friends that are offended. But <laughs> a lady told me. A lady told me before we landed the plane. She said, "Before you land on the plane." Oh boy. This is my uh, Texas accent. <laughs> she, said, she was American. I'm, I'm not in this show right now. Wait, uh, wait a minute. Is that, is that your social security number on the back of that? I just saw it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> he loads. He loads. <laughs> so, go ahead. Oh so my anyway, God, he's doing an accent, Jesus. She was a hey, blonde lady. She was an Indian. Just doing Abu from, uh, from, uh, yeah. for the Simpsons. It was an American lady. I just did the accent for a fact. <laughs> she said before we before we oh, landed, boy. she said, I've never been to a country where you can smell it before you land. And sure enough, five minutes before we landed, you can smell Mumbai or Bombay or whatever you want to call it. Mumbai. <laughs> Oh my god! I mean, yeah, I'm telling you, man. It's, it's I, I, I'm no. It's, 
when I'm back home in Nigeria, I haven't been to any other country but Nigeria. And when I go back, I'm like, yep, that this doesn't smell like America. This don't smell like America. It's it's a totally different smell. Right. Have you been you, to you have right, been to Ghana? kind of smells in Italy too, you said or something? You said what's, what's that? that? I thought you said he kind of had a little distinctive smell in Italy. Or am I yeah, it smells like great food. Yeah, I, I was going to say one thing about Nigeria. <laughs> so Nigeria is very proud of its fufu. Yes, which is a ball, good. It's a ball of dough that's made out of cassava or something. And rather than use uh, silverware, you take a big hunk of this dough and you put it in this kind of soup and you just kind of swallow it whole like a snake. Yeah. I mean... Nobody chews it. You can't nope. chew it. You can't chew it because it's already mashed and up there's already. a big rivalry between Nigeria and then three countries over, Ghana, which are both uh, pretty big countries, about who has the best fufu. Come on. And Ghana is like, Come we on. have the best fufu. And no, Nigeria's like, okay, so I have a friend in Ghana who's a driver in Ghana. His name's Samuel. He's one of my Facebook friends. Okay. He was my driver. I... He's never been in Nigeria in his life. He was so afraid to go to Nigeria. I twisted his arm and I made him go to Nigeria and try the fufu. And, and guess which one's better? Us. Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria. <laughs> no, it's not. You're off the you're off the show. Kick him out of here, Mike. That's all <laughs> you guys are you guys are so fufu there. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. So Lenora yeah. says, Lenora says, Oh my God. Hi, you guys. Hey, Lenora. Lenore's the best. Hi, Lenore. She is the best. So you're saying, so let's get this straight, Bill. You're saying that Ghana has the best fufu? Is that what you're saying? Honestly, they both <laughs> taste like, they both take, taste like balls of dough to me. You can't taste them when you just swallow them whole. I mean, come on. Yeah, but I don't even eat, I don't even eat fufu no more, so I don't even give a fuck no more. Because when I ate fufu, that blew me up. Might tell you, I was like really big. And then I stopped eating fufu, I lost a tremendous amount of weight because the fufu just it man, swells that, you man, up. That, that's like 200% carbs. I mean, it's... It swells you up, man. Yeah. <laughs> that carbs. sounds like something I would eat. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you'd love fufu. I, I don't I think, think so food either. in Nigeria is a little challenging. And I like a lot of food, but there's a lot of, like, chopped up stuff that, uh, I don't know, uh, that, that I don't recognize. And so, so what did uh, you... Anyway. What was, what was this, did you eat anything strange in Nigeria that you was like, oh, this is some strange shit? Or do you remember... Uh, the weirdest thing that I ate was in Ivory Coast. Okay, what was it? And I had I had um, uh, this animal called uh, a agouti. You know what an agouti is? No. Nah. Well, so it's called an agouti, and it's in a it's in the restaurant. It's an agouti. I looked it up, and it's this South American animal. And so I ordered it, and it was it was pretty good. And I, I wonder to myself, wait a minute, isn't that a South American animal, agouti? So I looked it up and found out a Gucci is also what the people in the Ivory Coast call cane rat. <laughs> it's a big giant rat. Wow. Yeah, so I've eaten rat. And I, I'll tell you, you know, uh what it tastes like. It's not, it tastes it's good. not bad. It tastes huh? like chicken. <laughs> it was chicken-esque. Chicken esque. <laughs> chicken Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I, I'm. I'm not that typical African. I just ate. I didn't eat no wild stuff. The probably the wildest meat that I probably ate was duck. I don't eat if it's not chicken or goats. That's yeah, it. Probably with duck. Around. It's huh? not everything. It's duck is not everything. It's quacked up to be. Oh, ah. God. And My, then the waiter gives you the bill. Oh. I should have brought laugh tracks. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? What is happening right now? What is happening? <laughs> I think we lost our we lost our audience, guys. <laughs> so, so what's the least favorite place you've been to? Then, what was the worst place that I could not? If I would you go back if you had to pick that place? I have to say Djibouti. Djibouti, not, not your booty, Djibouti. I, I or Guyana. Guyana. I, Guyana. Really? Not Why? Ghana. Not Guinea. No, 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 Guyana. I know, Guinea. I know Guyana. I know Guyana because one of the one of my favorite singers is from Guyana. Uh, Grant uh, Peter. Is it his name? Grant something. The guy that sang uh, "Give Me Hope," Joanna, give me hope, Joanna. The guy that had the song "Electric." Uh, what's the song? Jumbo. Electric that's Avenue. Kenya. That's Swahili. Uh, Electric Avenue. That guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, uh hang on. Grant something. Eddie Grant. Eddie Grant. Eddie Grant. Eddie Grant. Yeah. He's from Guyana. Really? You don't? Yeah. He's from Guyana. No, man, and, 
That and place is rough. Hey, guess I, what? This was from Guyana. Fucking Billy Ocean is from Guyana. You're welcome. No, Billy Ocean is from uh, Barbados, I think. No, Guyana. Huh? That's Let's him. Look it up. That's the guy. Eric. Is it Eddie Grant? So That's I've him. Been, I've been to all the oceans except Billy Ocean. Okay. Oh, <laughs> what is this? Who is this guy? <laughs> you got you got me sound like a mob guy. Who is you know, this guy? Geography, geography jokes never really took off. <laughs> no. no. So why do they you don't, not like they don't Diana? land very well? Uh, well what's wrong? Oh, Jesus, Mike. So why <laughs> you don't like Diana? Right now? You didn't plan it that way. What are we doing? <laughs> so why you don't like Guyana? What, what's wrong with Guyana? Somebody tried to rob me the same day I arrived. Oh, blatantly, shit. blatantly at a club. They tried to steal my GoPro, and then they told me they were going to kill me. And I said, no, I'm going to kill you. And then I ran and got a taxi really fast. Before anybody... <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Then you ran into a taxi cab. I had my, Go I had my GoPro like this. Like I was just going to poke him in the head, you know? And, uh, yeah, no, it was it was pretty terrifying. Yeah, but you why would uh, we have a GoPro at a nightclub anyway, though? I was traveling. I was walking around. I'm always filming everything. Yeah, I gotta, you're, my, you're actually to get robbed because you look. You obviously you're white, so he's like. Well, it was in my, well, that that's the other thing in Guyana. There's not any white people uh, at any place walking around, and so you know if there's an argument, uh, who's right? <laughs> not the white guy. <laughs> so, uh, so you tend to stand out. That's just Haiti's <laughs> pretty scary too. I Haiti. had a guy pull a knife on me in Haiti. Oh and I just God. went and bought a machete for four dollars, and just stood there and then walked off. So oh anyway, <laughs> it's crazy white. You're a, it, I'm doing my Africa. You're a crazy white man. <laughs> you you just keep dancing with the devil. He'll come. <laughs> well, I was twirling it around like this, you know, and there's like they don't know they don't know who you are. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's it's a bluff. So I would have gotten my ass kicked, but you know, it was a bluff. All right. So, what about Australia? You have any good I just, stories I just back about over there. there? My first big trip ever uh, that got me started doing this whole crazy journey to go to every country in the world was Australia. I went there when I was um, about, uh, I guess, 25, 24 years old. I went over there for two weeks and I met a guy at a hostel and he kind of gave me this whole sort of lecture about how Americans travel wrong and how I should sort of change up my travel. And you could do this and you could work and you could sleep in churches or whatever. And, you know, how you could survive without, you know, traveling on low money. Yeah. Give me, yeah, give, me a tip. I, give us a tip. I want to hear the tips. Well, I have a lot of them. If yeah, you would like to subscribe to my Facebook channel. <laughs> they got to subscribe to hear the tips. Or the traveling wizard it, .com. <laughs> God damn it. Really, so I changed my ticket to three months. videos. It's funny because I've told people that if they're going somewhere and they want advice, I said, I tell them, you know, if I've been to that country, I tell them about it. But then I said, go on this guy's YouTube channel because you're going to learn everything you need to know about that country. And you're going to laugh when you're done. Because So, yeah, you know, sometimes it's by the seat of my pants. Uh, I went to uh, I did Florence in a day, but I had just taken a Renaissance art class and I wasn't interested in it before. But then I made a list of all the stuff I wanted to do and figured out how I could do it in just a day. And I went there and knocked it out and I filmed it. And if somebody was doing a cruise ship and they landed in Florence and they wanted to see all the famous paintings and eat the best, the be my favorite sandwich in the whole wide world is in Florence. You know, you could do that and you could walk across the, you know, the, the famous bridge and all that stuff. Uh, you could do it a day. if you watch my video, instead of trying to figure it out on your own. So I, that, that's, that's kind of the thing I do. Yeah. So I got tricks. I, I use a bunch of, I have a bunch of different uh, travel hacks. I just came back from uh, uh, business has been very slow for me in uh, both the entertainment industry and the travel industry. Right. So I went up to, uh, to, to the Boston, Rhode Island uh, area with a friend to do a little bit of uh, measuring houses for insurance uh, things for a couple of weeks. But on the way back, everything's closed. I still found ways to make it fun. Visit cemeteries, which are never closed. I visited houses that you weren't supposed to go to like, well, I got kicked out of Thomas Jefferson's house, but I went there. I went to Elvis's house. Uh, I went and Memphis. visited That's Edgar Allan Poe's grave. I mean, we had fun. We found the best the best chicken I've ever had in my entire life. I found in this place. 
but you know, your combination of you know uh, travel apps and and uh, websites like Atlas Obscura, which just gives you kind of weird random places and the okay. oldest bar in the world, the oldest house in the world. Hold up, Bill. Famous what? people's houses. You know, it's, it's cool. Bill, it's, uh, yeah. what's the name of the chicken place? You didn't tell us the name. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. That's it. And it's in Rhode Island. It's Rhode uh, Island. in the uh, Newport area. And this chicken is like grilled and roasted and then fried and garlic. And oh, my God, it was like heaven in your mouth. Tell me Ray is queuing this chicken so we can see it. Well, I'll tell you what. It's just so they say the, best chicken in, the best chicken in the United States is supposed to be in Memphis, Tennessee at Gus's Fried Chicken. They got it here in Houston. There. They're here in Houston. They got it here in Houston, right? In Washington. Oh, they got it now. Yeah. Okay. It's good fried chicken. It's great. You I want was there yesterday. the best chicken you ever ate. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Winner, it's winner, good. chicken dinner. Yes. Winner, and winner, chicken dinner. And it's in Rhode Island, right? Newport, Rhode Island, which is a fabulous town. Well, winner, winner. It is a uh, TripAdvisor, a four and a half star place. <laughs> um, yeah, here it is. Here's the Yelp page. Um, look at that chicken. Oh, yeah, I do get a small commission from Winner Winner if you eat chicken from there. <laughs> of course you do. Oh my! It's my affiliate page. <laughs> yeah, blow the chicken up so we can see what the chicken fried chicken looks like. Oh, man, I started a. Comp- I start, I'm starting a. Ooh, ooh, I'm starting what? a hot dog stand next door called Wiener Wiener. Uh, <laughs> hot dog Diener. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> we're gonna talk after the show. <laughs> fun. What's happening? So uh, yeah, Koo's Koo's yeah, Koo's, look, Koo's making me show him porn. Uh, right <laughs> That's right what I'm there. saying, man. I want to see this fried chicken that brags about. So, so hey, since we're since we're talking about uh, great food, I got to tell you, if uh, I don't know how many of your people uh, that watch the show are from Houston, I went to the, one of the most interesting places I've ever eaten. And I, I go to a lot of weird places to eat. Uh-huh. And it's in Houston, it's called, or it's in Kima, it's called Eculent. And it's it's like this crazy experience, 23 courses. And it's not cheap, but man, what a place. <laughs> I, I never, they they have safe. a dome. When, when you get a deep. salad, it's a dome. And they take it off and smoke comes out. Huh? And everything is all uh, like freeze dried. And it's got, your fork has like a, uh, a um, scent in it. Uh, a smell. It's crazy. Uh, they've got like, they got water spouts on the wall where you get your glass. I don't know. It's the, the chef is always changing it. They only allow uh, eight people or 12 people to uh, eat at this place at a time. And it's three hours long, but oh, man, wait, oh, the wait is the, oh, so you have to call for reserve uh, seating. You, and you might have to wait a month or two months or something. Oh, wow. But this, this is like, this is like world-class and it's in a place that no one's ever heard of. It's it's crazy. So I, I found this place. A friend of mine recommended it accidentally. I went there on my birthday and I was blown away. Nice. And I, like I said, I've been to lots of lots of restaurants. So so Rayo, man, what a place. So Rayo said you done TV. So how many TV shows have you done talk show wise? I've done. Uh, I haven't been in, like in a I, I did a reality show. What's the uh, deal? Uh, uh, Extreme uh, Home Makeover. Oh, nice. I've been in that. I was a host in one of the episodes. Uh, of course, when they uh, when they put it on, they uh, sub me with Paul Rodriguez for some parts. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's still Paul uh, Rodriguez. Uh, nice. That's one of Koo's best friends. <laughs> I, don't know, so, I, don't, I, I don't know. Stand- I don't know about best friends. I, the best friends. I was a stand-in was- slash comedian on uh, Extreme Home Makeover. Really? Uh, at, a ma- oh. at a magic show, and I and I introduced the cast. You know, Ty and and those guys. I was in another show. Um, <laughs> 30 something grannies or something. I can't what? remember the name of it. Uh, <laughs> That's like some body would watch, right, Mike? 30 something granny. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I'm going to tell her you said that. <laughs> you said, you tell so much shit about her. I do one joke and you try to tell me, I'll tell her. She's probably watching now, probably. <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. So, Mr. Wizard, huh? So, do you have any like? Is there a rivalry with with magicians? Do y'all have that like the little rivalry thing, or is that not? Do you mean big, big rivalry? Yeah, magicians. They were like you just say you have a little rivalry. You have to say do you have a big rivalry? Everything's okay. big when you're a magician. 
Oh, you're a magician? Uh, you're a big? You know, uh, I, I'm, I'm friends with most of the magicians in town. And uh, Are you friends you with know, Robbie Bennett? I, yeah, Robbie. Uh, I know Robbie very well. How do you know Robbie? Yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, Rob, Robbie's a good friend of mine. And he oh, does please. some great illusions. Uh, he's got a thing. Uh, he's got a show going on tomorrow that he's doing. He for some people to do. And uh, right now he's kind of laying low because of the, you know, the. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you heard about this Corona thing that's been going yeah, it's, around. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, but uh, he's been doing some big shows and he's traveling. He's doing uh, uh, all sort of uh, southern United States, Louisiana and, and some, yeah, some yeah. good stuff. I always call him, uh, you know, I always like look like a Baldwin, you know. Yeah, so the, uh, the other Baldwin, kinda, yeah. Kinda, yeah, he kind of favored it. Yeah, Alec Baldwin. Kind of got the, the eyes or something. It's gotta be the eyes. <laughs> the Baldwin family, the Baldwin, but the Baldwin pianos. Then he looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other show uh, just you don't uh, get a lot of piano jokes. <laughs> just to circle back, the other show you were on, uh, I checked your filmography. You're so famous, you don't even remember all the TV you did. It was Destination <laughs> America. Destination <laughs> America. Yeah. So that's, uh, I think that's the show with um, Norm, or not Norm, uh, Cliff Clavin. From, uh, well, so, so, so I had this, yeah, it's uh, I had this uh, show that we did for New Do Television. And so anyway, it's uh, it was going to be sold to Destination America, and then they changed formats. Oh, really? Yes. So I might need to update my uh, my bio because I, I don't know if I ever ended up on Destination America. I think it became Destination India or something. But anyway, so so we have that. I did some stuff for New Do Television. Uh, a friend of mine here in town, the producer Matt, he he does a uh, he's got a uh, actually a, a really good show called the uh, Traveling Texan Abroad. I believe is the name of his show, uh, and it's yeah. a really well produced series. Or that's Texas. it. Yeah. Oh, you know him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, own new do, I own the new do television station. That's why. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, I'm leaving the show. You should keep it done. You should keep it done. No, I'm, I'm just a partner. And, and, okay. And, uh, yeah, we did a brand partner. And I got business cards and everything that say new do on them. And I, I use them to pick my teeth with. Um, but uh, yeah, Texan on Tour is actually a great show. Uh, Destination America is a pretty good show, and uh, you're listed on one of the episodes. Just uh, in case okay, you yeah. Are you I, I might be, I, I've been, hey, I, I've, done a, I've done a couple of movies, and I think maybe I was in Destination America. I, Bill, yes, I think that a, I was. Is that a? Is that you drinking out like like a a, a chastel? What do they call that shit? You know what goes great in your chalice there? Is chalice, the yeah. Urban from old humble distillery. Is the, Yes, uh, tell tell me more about this uh, liquor. Where can we so find this? Is, uh, what, this is what sponsor? It's made. What in website can we find? Oh, you can get this uh, actually at any specs. So I know there's a specs by your house because I stopped and picked up some wine when I came to your house until I realized you had about 800 bottles of wine in your wine collection, and <laughs> so it was a little embarrassing. Uh, when you go into not anymore, I'm I'm down to two, oh, and, yeah. and uh, one is one is Boone's Farm. <laughs> So, what you know, you know what my favorite wine is? What's that? <laughs> you already knew that joke. Yeah. You, you knew that joke. You just like oh, you let I me did. have it. I didn't, and I'll tell you why I didn't know that because it's it's not a joke, Bill. <laughs> it's really not a joke. No, Koo, you've got Bill. You've got to someday. You've got to invite Koo to your house. Koo, you go into this house now as an Italian. I walk in the house and his living room is dedicated to Florence, I believe, right? It is, uh, it is a tribute. It's, to uh, well, actually, it's a combination of Verona, because I live on Verona Drive, and, okay. and Verona is one of my favorite places. I actually dated Juliet before Romeo did. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's go on. Do you want to take it a, a trip? Yeah, let's that? take a little virtual tour of the house. Show us the secret. Pay no attention to the naked uh, satyrs behind me. All right. So this is Bill's house. Bill, um, I think he got most of his stuff from Liberace's garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, this is the living room. We got uh, look at it. Show, show the. We got lots of statues. 
Wow, that's dope. And, uh, and uh, th- this one tried to press charges, but I got off of it because of statue of limitations. Uh, <laughs> Rayo, what are you doing? Who is this guy? Uh, this is uh, yeah. This is the crazy. Uh, we got a clock tower. If you notice, this is set to the exact time that Marty McFly is. Uh... <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> So uh, anyway, uh, we got Pompeii over here, uh, clock tower, uh, the Verona thing. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And then of course the big throne. Yeah, you you this throne thing. What's up with this? Are you, this your little fetish with the chairs and shit. What's up? So here's the crazy thing. I bought this. I was in a Polynesian country, and these people had stored this in the attic, in this in this straw in this grass hut. And what happened is when it rained, it fell down. And the moral of the story is people who live in grass houses shouldn't stow thrones. <laughs> hey, dude, I'm liking that fucking uh, that Spartan right. helmet you got over there. Bill, don't you have a Spartan helmet or something, like a Roman helmet? Yes, because I do lead a smart, a Spartan life. There it is. I usually like to wear this when I'm Roman around town. Uh, but It's Greek to me. Um, wow. But this is... This is house, and you got to go to parties. And then he's a great, he's probably the greatest DJ in, in the world. Yeah, <laughs> in the world. Forget about uh, in the world guys. that's considered by the UN, United Nations. <laughs> Only the world that the United Nations you know, consider. His backyard parties are epic. Uh, uh, we're in the. Uh, this is the Egypt room, and uh, you can see I've got uh, wow, sort of. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. Oh yeah. This was done by an artist friend of mine. His name's Jason Barnett. JasonBarnett.com, maybe. He's a fantastic artist. He did, uh, we got mummies. Ooh. This is from Valley of the Queens. And this statue here, does, do you know any good magic words? Uh, abracadabra. Yeah. Did you say abracadabra? Yeah. Wow. You got a secret <laughs> tunnel? No, there's, well, there's I guess secret there's no secret anymore. You have a secret room? Oh shit! Yeah. So if you go so in, oh, this is a secret room. Are you uh, planning on selling these. this? Oh, I see a strip. I just see a stripper pole. Yeah. No, it's a fire pole. <laughs> That's what I'm telling my mom in case she watches this. <laughs> This oh, is, you got you got some dope, at, dude. What do you do? For, are you like Indiana Jones? What the fuck is happening right now? He's traveling. Well, it's like, no, you have a lot of artifacts that is like important I, I stuff. Got, I, so I got this at an estate sale. So you did. It's a dead man's chest. I know. <laughs> Dude, are all you right, ever going to uh, sell this? Are you going to sell all this stuff you have or are you just going to keep it forever? You know, people always ask me that. It's like, why, why does everybody always want to sell their stuff? I want to keep <laughs> every little scrap of anything I get. Oh, so. shit. So that's it. It's a, it's a, it it goes on. You know what I'm going to do? Since we're on here, let's do one more thing. I told you I love Easter Island, and I yes. got my Easter Island statue out here. It's my favorite thing. I'm a Easter Island fanatic. Uh, he's got a, like a tiki backyard here. This is pretty cool. All right, so we're outside, and uh, I don't know if you can see it. Cool. This is a there's, like one, there's one Easter Island statue, and then we have a Another one back here, but it's got a kind of a cabana thing. Anyway, so that's it. And there's a cow and uh, some other things. That yeah, is all right. Wow. That's cool. Hey, well, while you get back to your throne, we're just going to play a little bit a little walking video. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to put this on a loop. Uh, wow. Wow. I- know how bad that video is. you could use that in court <laughs> bill don't take this the wrong way but you 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 strike me as a guy like indiana jones fucked homie a clown or some shit you just you're you're like everywhere i don't even indiana know the clown. <laughs> indiana the clown because you know you're like i find you fast you're like the most interested man in the world right now you should have somebody endorsing this stuff that you do seriously yeah, they should name a beer after you. Something. Something. A bill beer? 
a I Bill, like it. a Bill beer. No, I think they already made they made Billy beer when uh, when uh, Jimmy Carter was president when they were Billy beer. Yes, I don't know, brother. This is no. way before me, so I don't I can't say yes or no to that. <laughs> I don't know. How old are you? How old are you? I'm, I'm a thousand years old, but I look amazing. Uh, thirty eight. When I was your age, I was thirty nine. <laughs> what is this video? What is this one? This is him getting into his uh, clown. If you want to see how the makeup, this is him. Uh, before, oh, sweet. Yeah, he's this traveling wizard. He just uses the hood. Um, oh, God. So then this is this is how you're, you. I, what you've done, Bill? You've made our fucking real talk crazy like he. What the fuck, man? Yeah, it's <laughs> contagious. It is. And um, this is just him getting ready for a date, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. Yeah, there is. Uh, <laughs> the fucking <laughs> oh god! I had to take the plunge. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> He's all right. I'm it's sorry, my right. nose was stopped up. Oh, <laughs> I'm a commotion. I'm the life of the party. Yeah. Oh my god. So look. If you want to, uh, how do people reach out to you for uh, uh, interactive DJ or, <laughs> or uh, so how, uh, the best place to reach you, Bill, is probably where? the crazy house because he's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a crazy person. So, um, so, I, so I have two lives and one is a traveling wizard and the other one is incredible events and incredible events. We do everything from uh, we book out uh, magicians, jugglers, stilt walkers, fire eaters, animals. I've got red foul <laughs> shows. We, we do big. What's that? Comedians. We book out comedians. And you know what? I haven't booked out a comedian in a while, which is why we haven't talked until just now. Yeah, so right now, if you guys would like to buy, book a comedian that's not too dirty. No. Uh, cool. I can't, I can't uh, promise. I can't promise anything. <laughs> <laughs> It depends how much you're oh, paying. If you're paying me really well, then it's I'll still got paying. Easter. It's still got Easter on it. This is how. Uh, yeah, we're staying with the times. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I, I guess I need to change that today. I I haven't even looked at it because the phone the phone has just started to ring again. You know That's now right. the only thing we've been doing is telegrams and some animal shows. We had some Easter bunnies outside waving at people in cars, and uh, you know all the stuff that we've been doing, all our summer reading programs for libraries and HOAs, mostly canceled, but. You know, hey, uh, it's all going to come back. Yeah, I don't know when, but someday. So, how go. many? I, 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 or the traveling with that? How time. many? What's that? Go ahead, Koo. Did we lose Koo? Is he frozen? Koo's frozen. I can't hear nothing you said. Yeah, I think your internet just. It's all, it froze up. Both of you guys froze yeah. up. Yeah, you're. Am I frozen? No, we didn't freeze. We're good. Am I in it? I got yeah, plenty of juice on my sack. You're back. There you go. back. So uh, you were asking him a question, Coop? No, he's it's freezing he's up now. There. Can't hear none of y'all. Yeah, it's your internet is is cutting out because I'm watching it on the stream. Um, something's cutting into your internet. The stream there, Coop. Uh, but I'll I'll go next. So so again. It is incredible events, or uh, or they can go to the traveling wizard, uh, and they can yeah, either so, uh, or you so travel channel. advice. Yeah, travel advice to travelingwizard.com, entertainment advice, and we're happy to just uh, give you suggestions. We have lots of cool stuff, things that people have never seen. A lot of original stuff, living statues, living paintings. Uh, we've got still walkers, a transformer still walker new that's just great, playing by Ryan Magnuson. Uh, and a bunch of really, really cool things. So uh, no matter what kind of party you're doing, whatever theme it is, you want to do a Las Vegas party and have showgirls and Elvis and casino, we can do that. Or we can do a Willy Wonka candy party. You know, we got all kinds of stuff. So plenty of stuff. All right. So, yeah. uh, uh, Koo and I will, uh, I'm just plugging us. Uh, uh, Koo and I will be uh, in Corpus Christi at Comics Live uh, the weekend, the first weekend in June, June 6th. Um, tickets are on sale, 20 bucks. You can, uh, the, the ticket link is actually up on the Comics Live Facebook page website, or you can just call Comics Live and their phone number and you will see them. Um, who's coming back here? 
Uh, there he is. There we go. There we go. So, um, uh, so you can see us on June 6th. Uh, you can also check out, uh, I will be adding dates on book to actually, uh, I've got uh, seven shows uh, between now and the end of July. And uh, hopefully I get the last weekend filled in and I'm good. So I'm back, baby. So check out my website, uh, Comedian Yay. Mike or Facebook page, Comedian Mike Grail. I just told him, Koo, that you and I are doing uh, my first show uh, we're doing together, Koo and Mike back to back. We're back to back uh, at Comics Live. And then Koo, uh, before you plug all your stuff, who do you have on your comedy show this week? Your evening comedy show. Well, tonight I on Comics Talking Shit, I do have Ben Jackson at uh, Brandy Adams and Jennifer Jeremy. It's gonna be a great show, uh, awesome show. Please, y'all watch that. Uh, awesome comedians. But the big one is Thursday. Paul Rodriguez, the legend, the king of Latin comedy, is gonna be on my show, Comics Talking Shit. Add me on Facebook, Bill, so you get to watch it and talk about how I took, <laughs> I took your job from you. I want to see that. Uh, but, yeah, this is going to be crazy. It's going to be insane uh, tonight. Please watch the show. Uh, don't forget, our official sponsor of the show is Oh, oh Humble, Humble Distillery, Distillery Company. Distill Company. And they actually have an anniversary show today. So you guys should log off of this when you're done and go to Old Humble Distill Company and go watch their live anniversary Memorial Day show going on right now on the website on Facebook page and like the page too as well. And that's I'll what I'm drinking in here. Should we do a shot together? What are you drinking in your chassis? Exactly what he Challenge. what Mike has. Yeah. Oh, you're drinking whiskey as well? Oh, uh, not just any whiskey. Old whiskey. whiskey. Really? No, you're not. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, smell, what's, smell my breath. Where's the bottle? Where's the bottle? Where's your old humble? Go get your bottle. I need to see it. Go get that bottle. Oh, oh, bullshit. I'd rather have, have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> Who harassing our our Where guy? I am. I am Wait, harassing. Please bring the bottle. Bring the I, bottle. He just got off work. He just got off work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like Bill. Bill's a good guy. On behalf of Ku, uh, shut up, Ku. Uh, I would like to thank you for doing this. Uh, really appreciate it. Again, best travel advice you can get if you want to know anywhere. He's been to Cuba. He's been to communist countries. He's been to countries with gulags. He's been to countries where they put bags over your head and wrap you in orange jumpsuits. He's been to all these countries anywhere, and the nice ones too. And anywhere. Hold up, hold up. What about Costa Rica? Have you been to Costa Rica? Where's that? <laughs> Just kidding, yes. You have? Yeah, I was actually did a, I did a trip last year, uh, sp uh, sponsored by Planet Hollywood, and um, they invited me down there, and I went down there and spent a few days and there. But I've been, I've done the volcanoes, and I've done, uh, I've been there a few times, like three, three or four times. Yeah, because that's one of the, my dream locations, though, is Costa Rica. I just want to go there. It's, so it's bad. a pretty place. It's real. It's real easy. Uh, they call it, uh, you know, um, it's Central America for. Uh, beginner travelers because it's really easy to do it's not scary doesn't have any kind of stigma attached to a very stable country and yeah, it's got lots of cool things to see that's why i want to go there that's exactly i've been doing my research man thank you for confirming that bill see this is a good podcast at first i was worried about it but now you told me about costa rica this is a good show i'm happy <laughs> i said we're just gonna do a comedy a comedy trio a costa comedy no 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 not gone. <laughs> no, no. Leave that to the experts. Leave it to us. Leave it to me and Ray. We'll take care of it. You write the joke first, then you say the joke, and then you tell the joke. Or just write us the check, and we'll write the joke for you. Yeah, there you go. Bill, one three, ste one one three one steps again. Yeah. One of my very first friends here in Houston, one of the first people I met in show business in Houston. Great guy. Nice. Uh, Good guy. I like it. We need to hang out. We need to hang out in real life. Of any time. And then uh, if you want travel advice, you go to uh, go to uh, the uh, Traveling Wizard or the Traveling Wizard YouTube channel. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Who we got tomorrow, Koo? Do you know? Uh, good question. Who do we have tomorrow? <laughs> Let's go. Do, 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 do. 
Right. Well, it's be interesting. I can't promise you. Will be. You certainly you won't be. Not have a guest tomorrow, but I'll get one tomorrow. Don't worry about it. No, that. I got one. I got one. Then I'm gonna get uh, Tim Mathis. I, I think. think that Tim Mathis next week. Uh, well, yeah. Well, I have Tim Mathis next Monday. I'll get somebody. I want to get somebody from California because I want to hear about how shitty it is in perfect weather to be stuck in your house. Uh, so. Bill, thank you so much for doing it. Thank you, it. Bill. Really appreciate My pleasure. it. Thanks for inviting me. Tomorrow, 3 o'clock, Wise Gate Speak podcast. Uh, we'll see you later. Bye. Peace.